Landscape Artist of the Year, Season 5, Episode 4. If this is a recap, to watch the whole episode, go to YouTube. And please leave me a thumbs up and subscribe, and we will get started. So, here we go. We're at Hurstmonceau Castle. This is kind of what you think of, I think, when you think iconically of a castle. And it's such a big form that the artists are going to have to do something with that today. This is a pretty good view of it, actually. I like the diagonal of the bridge. Um, I, I don't know what the view is that they have from their pods. They're in these little pods. Oh, look how gray a day it is. That means there's not going to be any shadows to work from. That's going to be tough. That's, so those pods will keep them protected from the elements, from wind and from rain, but not from the cold weather. And it looks pretty raw today. Now, we're going to look at the landscapes they did in order to be on the program. They had unlimited time to do these, and we're going to kind of deep dive into them a little bit. This looks uh, this is like a little slice of a, a window of a shop, perhaps. It's pretty monochromatic. It's interesting with those reflections. I think we're going to get a closer up view of it. Um, this, so they're in a very different setting today. Look, at, yeah, that's interesting with the black and white and sepia tones. So that's, that's an interesting choice. It certainly ca caught the judge's eye, which is what you want to do in order to be on the program. The next one up I think is hilarious, but I don't know how you'll feel about it. I mean, you either love it or you don't. It's sort of this big crab thing or lobster called a Attack of the Colossal Killer Crabs. Okay, so I think it's funny. I, I like things that have humor in them. Um, I wonder if he'll put a creature in his painting today. There we have a much closer up view of it. It's very interesting that that would be his landscape entry and also very interesting that the judges responded to it. Um, We've seen one other really surrealist painter on the landscape program, but he's sort of inserted surreal creatures that were very small within the landscape, whereas in this case, this is very dominant. <laughs> uh, that's, that's interesting. I, I also kind of like the idea of something like a crustacean on top of a building, because, you know, that would never happen. And maybe that's the point of surrealism, is that whatever you you picture in your head could never happen in real life. You know, it's a fantasy land. Um, I do enjoy the colors. It looks like a travel poster to a place you do not want to go. Uh, this is a very beautiful painting, and of course, uh, yeah, I love beautiful paintings. Um, there's a lot of depth in that painting. It's also a square. I happen to love a square. See all the depth you get in there? Ooh, that, I'm so smart to have that pole in front going off the canvas. Oh my gosh, I have to remember that with my own. There are times when I forget to do that, and it, it really works extremely well against the horizontals, a strong vertical against the horizontals. I, I do remember my diagonals, but occasionally I'll forget about how important a dominant horizontal is. And if it's not there, then it's, it's a really good idea to invent one. That's kind of sun-kissed in a way, so she benefited from having a good light source on that day or from her um, resource photo. She's not going to have that today. Uh, the next one up is also um, very interesting. Um, I, because of the color choices, this really leans quite a bit on black. I don't know if he's using black from a tube. Um, it's pretty unusual for people to use black and gray to this extent because it one thing that black and gray do is they, they definitely do tone down. They tone down all your other colors. Um, and if you do it carefully, uh, which I think he's done here, but by doing that, it makes those yellows even more vibrant. So it makes the yellow appear like it's even brighter than it came from the tube in contrast to, the, to the, um, how dulled down all the other colors are. I do like that dominant diagonal in front. That's, um, yeah, I would definitely lean toward that. And that's going to be a device that would be really useful today. We'll see if anybody uses it. I'll be surprised if nobody does. 
They're landscape painters. They know the tricks of the trade. Next one up is, um, we can't see it very well here, but we're going to get some other chances to see it. It's sort of a, what I think of as a Southwest scene here in the United States. It's of a yucca plant or some sort of succulent, a, a big succulent of some kind with earth tones all around it. There we can see it. It's also a square. Um, <laughs> it's very beautiful. I don't know why it caught the judge's eye necessarily. Um, yeah, that's a mystery to me. I enjoy the device of the three trees, and of course, you know, you know, it's a good, you know, when I squint my eyes, it really works as a an abstract as well. So this could be a very interesting painter today. But again, he's working with a very strong light source, and they're not going to have that today. And the next one up uh, that's coming is, uh, well, the next one coming up, I really don't know how to talk about very much. Maybe you do. Maybe we could insert your thoughts here. It almost looks like stained glass. So I find that an interesting effect. It's all about reflections and kind of like a stylized way of looking at the landscape. Uh, I'm, I'm just not sure what to say about it. Kind of interesting. Yeah, it kind of has that pebble-like effect. And, and that white is not a glare on the canvas. It actually was painted on there. So there's a lot of transparency, which is interesting. Um, I'm... Again, curious to see what she does today. It's very, very different. So we have a very varied field today. Now this is much more contemporary. This is the kind of painting that I love because it's got so much pure color, um, has movement, has diagonals and horizontals, lost and found edges, all you know, uh, everything that I absolutely love. And it's a very, very warm painting, leans toward warm tones, which I really like. Oh, it's so much fun to be able to use those turquoise colors when you can. Um, it's hard to find them in nature where I live, but I, I just that's just so pleasing to my eye that I, I enjoy that painting very much. Very Again, a very different scene than what they're going to be confronted with today. But that looks, even from far away, it may be a small painting, but I think it has a lot of impact. Oh, it's so much fun when you can come in and see close up what the artist is doing. And I suspect the artist probably was making these marks and then you've got to walk away and see, are they cohesive? Does it work? Yes, yes, sir. They, they definitely do. Really nice. Mm. Oh, I would like to own that painting. It makes me feel, that's a painting that makes me feel happy. Next one up is a, a painter who's a, a person who draws. Um, a rooftop kind of a scene, or as if you're in a plane looking down at the land. It's absolutely a great, great drawing. I never know whether drawings carry the same weight when it comes to the commission. We don't know what the parameters of the commission are. Oh, we know it's going to be in Venice. We know it's going to be a scene from Venice, but that's really all we know. That almost looks like it comes from like a historical um, textbook of some kind. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Um, yeah, all right, interesting, but I don't know how you judge drawings against the um, the color work, but that's the judge's job, not mine, and here we get a chance to see what it looks like. See how it disappears into the wall? Yeah, for the final commission, it's going to be have to be a large piece, and it has to have impact, because it's not going to be in your home. It's going to be on a gallery wall. All right, the judging begins. Now, the first thing that happens with the judging is uh, only three of these people will go on to the final uh, not the final, but the uh, semifinals of this episode. Only one will go forward to the final, the semifinals of the season, and this is season five. Here are all the paintings that were done today. It's just kind of fun to see them all lined up. Uh, looks like they moved indoors. I suspect the weather probably took a turn. Um, wow, that's a beautiful job. I have a feeling that's what I would have done. You've got to slice that big castle up into, into. It's like a cake. You, you can't you can't eat the whole thing. You got to slice it up. Um, and I really think this choice of a mixed green is so nice next to those oranges. That's really beautiful. And and I know it looks like there's black in there, but it's not. That's that's really leaning more toward um, a brownish tone. There's this is a warm painting. These are warm warm colors overall, but a really good value range. So um, I think this person came and accomplished a great job. And um, I know the towers aren't go you know, it's a good thing the towers aren't going off. So instead of having the towers go off the canvas, this person had the, the side wings of the castle go off. But it looks anchored in really nicely, and the diagonal of that bridge um, 
with maybe people walking across it. That that works really, really well. Yeah. Right now, that's my favorite, but that's that's the first one. Next one, you can see a really big difference in the color work between this one and the one we just saw. Black is being used here. This is much more what I call matchy-matchy painting, meaning this is what you would have seen on that day. So they didn't push color, but I'm sure it's exactly what the castle looked like on that day, so it's extremely accurate. I just prefer more of a color interpretation if if possible. But everybody sees color differently. What, what I see as being um, colorful, someone else might see as very garish. I don't know. Um, now in this case, they've taken the castle wings and had them go off the canvas and also the towers as well. Um, no, let's take it. No, yeah, they did. Wow, they did. I'm, I'm surprised that they did that. Well, um, interesting, right? Uh, sorry, I had to kill a mosquito. We have killer mosquitoes in the house right now. They bite you before you even know they're, you, that they're on you. I can't miss an opportunity to kill one. Uh, here's the next one up. I think this is the sur surrealist guy, the guy that did the the uh, uh, cr the cr crustacean. <laughs> um, so um, it's pretty clear to me that this person hasn't spent as much time looking at, uh, ha hasn't spent as much time in plain air work. Um, just an observation from from my own experience here. Um, but does but you know what? He has got a lot of emphasis on texture. Look at the brick. He's got that going on and in the trees. Now this is the person who did the drawing and her choice was uh, to only do the tops of the, the uh, parts of the tops of the castle. She must be really interested in the, the tops of things. <laughs> Yeah, everybody has their thing that really excites them and that they're passionate for. And maybe her thing is rooftops and, and Scott, you know, where uh, I would, rather than that, without being silly, I really think of, uh, I think it's interesting too, where the sky and the earth meet each other. I think that's a fascinating interaction. So I'm with her on that. I just, once again, just don't know if a drawing is going to carry the same weight. Here's the next one up. I, 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 I really like the composition of this one. I think this one was smart, 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 smart because of the diagonal going. He's got the bridge. Those trees really balance the rest of the castle that's going on. Um, I think this was a nice slice to choose from. I don't know if this is what they saw from their pod or whether they got out of their pod and took a picture and then worked from either an iPad or an iPhone. I don't know. Of course, they're allowed to use those devices. And to some degree, you kind of have to. Now, on a day like today, maybe not so much because there was no direct sunlight. But on any day you have direct sunlight, that sun is going to, it's going to change throughout the day. So you got to make some commitments. <laughs> and have a really good visual memory for what your plan was when you when you first take in the information. So a lot of people rely on technology or use technology when they get back in the studio and then you know use their studies from the field to inform their color choices. This is the person who had that very stylized kind of like transparent looking stream. Um, I'm not gonna really say a whole lot about this. If if you like this kind of thing, then, then you like this kind of thing. Um, I can say it's uh, it's loose and it's free, and she certainly has a style that's consistent. And you know, I have a feeling that if you saw lots of paintings from her, you probably would know they were hers. And some people, you know, are become quite well known simply for their signature style. And maybe she's one of those people. Uh, time will tell. Uh, but I like it better from from here. It has more impact from here. But um, but that's because of how bright the trees are. The, the trees are extremely bright compared to the rest. All right, here's another one. Black is being used quite a bit here too. I just find black dulls everything down. And um, um, I, I just wish for some softer edges. You know, it looks, the grass in front looks like it might've been cut out to some degree. Uh, it's, um, so anyway, it's it's not a very fluid painting. Not that something has to be really fluid, but it sure is extremely accurate. And and like I said, people see color differently. Uh, but look at look, there's the, that spot of color. That spot of color shows the potential of what a color value swap could do in this case. A few more of those would have um, ignited the painting. Um, I would have taken that green and 
um, that's so exciting there and, and, and worked it a little bit into the, the trees and the foreground to some degree. I know you wouldn't have seen it there. It's more like a feeling. I think I would have felt it there. Sometimes you have to go not with what you see, um, but uh, what you think you see. Um, yeah, because you're the artist. You're there to interpret. Wow, I, I really like this one a lot too. Um, got the diagonals. Again, the castle going off each side with the shoulders and leaving the, um, those, uh, are they called turrets, towers, whatever they are in place. I just like the negative space that it makes above the castle. I think that's very interesting. Um, when I squint my eyes, I find that strangely enough, the space above is even more interesting than what was established by the form. Um, I don't know who did this one, but we're, we'll, we'll probably find out. Ooh, that has good impact from far away. It's also a warm painting. This is a good color mixer. Not really involved in color value swap outs, but, uh, but I think they pushed color and yet got the uh, kind of the attitude of the day. Boy, ah, that is, that is hard. That, that, that just, the concentration it would have taken for, for all that draftsmanship is, is just really tough. All right, the final judging begins. They will pick three people to go on to the semifinals of this episode. So let's see who they are. And it's kind of not a surprise to me, although they're all kind of similar. Here's the first one. This was the first one that came up um, when we started reviewing the paintings. I agree, I, for all the reasons already stated. This is this is a beautiful job. Let's see. Um, let's see what happens with our next one. Our next one up is also. Um, oh, this would have been the the last one that I showed you. I, yeah, no, not the last. Anyway, it doesn't matter. This is this is a beautiful job as well. Much more involved with lost and found edges, which I enjoy, and movement in the canvas too. You can see that in the sky. Yeah, and there's the third one. Whew, wow, there's a lot of similarity. This is gonna be tough for the judges. Um, oh boy, I don't know which one I would pick. Do you know which one you would pick? Well, now we're gonna look at the paintings they submitted where they had unlimited time next to the ones that they did today in four hours. It would have been five if you don't take your lunch break. Um, wow, that's beautiful. Uh, I would like to see more from this painter. So fine with me if he wins, but let's see what the next one up is. Next one up, oh, oh. Well, I'm leaning toward this fella because I love his submission so much. And I also like what he did today. You know, he kind of simplified things to the basics of what you needed. Uh, really got the job done. Really nice. All right. And the last one. Oh, it's the woman who had that. Oh, gosh. What are they going to do? Oh, my gosh. I'm so glad I don't judge anything. This would just be, um, they're all, they all should go forward. So I'm not going to be disappointed. Well, no matter what I do, I'll be disappointed. But they're all worthy. The winner is, dun, 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 dun. Well, I'm not sad. <laughs> no, I'm not sad at all. I really want to see more from this person. I love this beginning painting. I think it's just fabulous. And, um, you know, obviously they're not going to give him a beach scene to do. Oh, actually, I know the last painting uh, location in this series. Oh, actually, it's quite dismal. It's, it's, I think it's, it's called Battersea, and I think it's a, in the dark. Oh, just the the worst possible assignment that you could give somebody, but but that's for them to deal with. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.